Welcome back, and we have Tim Alexander joining us for that breaking news we talked about in the uh, first hour. Uh, and joining us, of course, regularly now, we have Michael Velarde. And, Michael, I, we, one of the questions before we get into this other news, and I want to clarify it because I've had a number of emails of people that are confused. Uh, one of the emails was a gentleman who emailed me and said, I can't find in the health care bill, which is over 2,700 pages, the right. reference to the implantable chip. And the fact is, there are references to a previous bill that was passed, which is 1,018 pages. I posted that PDF last Thursday. That bill was passed uh, months before the so-called Obamacare bill, the Affordable Care Act. And in that act, they actually, uh, the FDA and Health and Human Services demand that, that when the health care bill is put into place, will be operational by March 23rd, 2013, 36 months after the passage of the bill. That is a fact. Now, people might want to dispute it and say, no, there's no implantable chip either for newborns or for those people that are in the plan. Now, if you're not in the plan, you're not immediately mandated. But what will happen with Obamacare is premiums are going to go through the ceiling because, and I was listening to a program the other day uh, by uh, Jonathan E. Mort. And his legal analysis is probably the best analysis. Wow. We're going to have Jonathan on the program. What he's basically said is Judge Roberts came up with a very schizophrenic judgment, which meant that, number one, they called it a tax so that it was okay for the government to do it. And on the other hand, dealing with the fact that it also is anti-constitutional because it gets into health care where the federal government has no right to be. But they also said there was no penalty for not doing it. In other words, they can tax you or hit you with a penalty, but they can't do anything more than that. They can't put you in jail to do anything else. So right. if you have a choice between buying insurance for, say, sixteen or $22,000 because you're a high-rated case, right, or it costs a lot for your family or your business, you... Uh, can opt to just take the penalty and the hospital and the, has, and the insurance corporations have to actually absorb the cost of your care and there's no penalty for it in other words you can run a bill right through the ceiling and there's no penalty that means basically health care premiums will go right through the ceiling health care hospitals trauma centers doctors will go bankrupt taking care of uninsured people the government says there's no penalty the only people getting the money is not the doctors and the hospitals and the corporations that actually run the trauma centers or whatever it's going to be it's going to be the irs Right, that's right. The okay, IRS so gets the money, absolutely. So, so now here, here's the the situation. Obamacare guarantees the destruction of the U.S. economy. It guarantees the destruction of health care. It guarantees a further right that now Judge Roberts has given, so the government can literally mandate everything from everybody has to have an electric car or solar panels, whatever. And those are things that I think that people can make their own decisions. I think personally, solar panels are a good idea if you have control of your own power and you're not tied into the network where you have no power if the power grid goes off. I think I think it, it, the idea of mandating electric cars when it actually creates more environmental pollution than natural cars or using natural gas or uh, compressed uh, you know, propane or whatever. Uh, we had liquid natural gas taxis in, in Calgary, Alberta 30 years ago that, were made, that the city decided to pass a, a local statute. And those, all they generate is uh, water vapor. And they're a fraction of the cost of gasoline. And the engines, by the way, last half a million to a million miles. So, no, we don't want government telling us the nanny state. And, in fact, the latest attack by the abominator is that his latest speech, and this is how arrogant this maniac is, and he is a maniac. He's a psychopathic, narcissistic maniac. You didn't get your success. It doesn't matter if you're a champion Olympic-level swimmer or a good doctor or businessman running your flower shop or doing a great business in whatever state and developing a new innovative technology. No, no. It was America that did it. It was government. You just have to ride on the back. And really saying is worship government. The state is master. The state is your mother and father. Worship the fatherland. That is a communist that we have in the White House, a usurper in chief, a Kenyan citizen, and of course the latest reports from the, and we'd want to talk about this today, the Sheriff of Ohio is finally coming out with this bomb, which should result in the immediate arrest of Obama, not only for his misuse of a social certificate, which he got from Connecticut and his false birth certificate, but also the the LIBOR scandal, the scandal of, of literally launching wars without the congressional support. I mean, it goes on. The list is so long that we have Obamagate here. 
And uh, we are literally teetering on World War III now, and I want Tim to get into this uh, announcement, where the de- decapitation, and you can be certain that it was American support, technology, and logistics, and intelligence support that allowed the so-called Free, uh, free Syrian Liberation Army to decapitate or attempt to decapitate the Syrian government. This means this is moving into high gear, and well, I can it, guarantee it, 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 you... Yeah, uh, yeah. It, 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 even Divka, uh says that it could not have been the Free Syrian Army. Uh, it was not as original reports came out and said it was a suicide bomb. What it was was a hidden bomb in the War Cabinet conference room in the National Security Building headquarters. Right. Um, this was something that took uh, high-level intelligence operatives, probably from either Mossad, the CIA, or Saudi Arabia, or a combination thereof. So this was a, a strike, not uh, one removed from them, but this was a direct strike at the war cabinet. They killed most of the war cabinet, including uh, Assad's sister's husband, uh, who basically was the number one person in terms of uh, uh, security for the whole nation. They killed the defense minister, they killed the interior minister, and they killed an assistant vice president. Uh, so this was a this, gets per- this is close up and personal. This is now bringing Absolutely. it right home to, uh, to Assad's wife's brother. This is now... You take out my brother. There's a saying in in in, in the Middle East, and this predates Islam. It predates Christianity. It predates oh, yeah. Judaism. Six thousand years ago, you know, me and my brother against my cousin. Me and my cousin against my enemy. What's going to happen now? And there's two peoples that I've warned you on Earth. They're the most dangerous people to cross. And that's Syrians and Russians. And we're now facing both of them. And I can tell you, Mr. And Putin... And the Chinese who, and the Iranians, for good measure. Well, the Chinese are no slouches, but they're very clever. And the Chinese have been assembling. They're trying to put a blue water or a navy together. But they're quite capable, uh, through a shipment of troops and armaments, to Mexico now because... Of, People's Republican Army, Hutchinson Wampoa, owns every airport and every uh, and every seaport in Mexico, and they can ship in their material over a period of months if they need to, and launch a mass invasion of America. And people say that can't happen. I excuse me, we are literally doing everything to piss off every country on earth, and to piss off the Russians and Chinese and try to back them into buying bad date in Europe. And the banking the banking structure now is falling apart. We talked and about this in the first and hour. Don't forget the Iranians and have the world's most sophisticated advanced biological warfare program and right. they've designed it unlike most countries that have uh, uh, recombinant DNA genetic engineering technology where they produce uh, uh, biologically produced toxins uh, they do that as well but they use it to produce self-replicating super killer viruses that no human being has ever in other words, they had, it, this is the daughter of the biopreparat program uh, from Russia, where an entire city was dedicated over a quarter million technicians and scientists, and 220 kilometers north of Moscow, were developing the most advanced biological weapons in human history. These are and, these. This is a doomsday weapon system that they have right. and by the way, they're, against Europe and North America. By the way, their missiles. Here, here's here's the strategic thing about this, uh, and, and they. W- the NATO, the United States, Israel, and the Gulf Cooperative Council, so the conservative uh, Arab monarchy, Saudi Arabia, and so forth, they have now put Assad in a very, very dangerous box. Uh, recently, uh, in the last few days, there was a lot of publicity in mainstream media that Assad may be uh, getting ready to use his chemical warfare, his missiles against Israel, against his own people, and so forth. Uh, if, if Assad doesn't act, they now have the perfect setup to do a false flag attack in Israel or elsewhere uh, uh, using a chemical warfare and on that basis respond uh, to a weapon of mass destruction attack using weapons of mass destruction as is our stated uh, policy. In other words, we might nuke uh, Syria uh, literally in day or less. Yeah, it could happen. When we come back, we're going to hear from Michael Lardy on the latest of Sheriff Ohio and much, much more. Stay there, Tim. We'll be back in a moment.
Welcome back, and uh, let's dive into some of the uh, the Obama news and about Sheriff Arpaio. Tell us about it, uh, Michael Vlardy. Okay, well, let me, let me tell you. What they did was they sent uh, two you know, sheriff's investigators to Hawaii. They were able to locate the woman who actually signed the birth certificate. They sat down with her, and she explained all the procedures that are in place in Hawaii and how they operate and explained, you know, what would happen uh, when the birth certificate, um, you know, was first produced and somebody's born and how it's recorded and, and how there was different symbols and markings and numbers that are on the certificate. And she explained all that to them. And uh, what they found was there was some, some of the there's some real inconsistencies with the one that the White House produced. Number one in second box nine, they had noted on it that his father was African. Well, back in 1961, that notation never would have been made. Um, in Hawaii, he also explained the law in Hawaii. Now, in order for you to get the birth certificate, you don't necessarily have to. You know, you could be an adult and you can go to to the. Um, the state and say, listen, my son was born, and they will issue you a birth certificate without you having to show the child. And based on the, the way his certificate was numbered, it was inconsistent with him having been born at the hospital that they said he was actually born at because they pulled the records of uh, those born at about the same time as he was, and the numbers are, 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 are a bit off. And it was more consistent that he was either born in an outlying area or possibly, you know, they, they, his father came forward or someone came forward and said, hey, he was born at this time, they issued the certificate. So um, the sheriff's office basically said that the, the certificate that was presented was fraudulent on its face. And they tried to get the records. There was a, the hospital keeps a, a, a record book of all the births, and they were denied access to that record book, um, even though it's supposed to be public record. And it, it's also kept on microfiche, and they were de- denied access to the microfiche, which would, of course, would have all the births in there. And when you know at the hospitals, it would be. Categorize means they, they, they're going to have all the births of the babies, you know, for a couple of day period of time, and they would send it into the state, and it would be bunched together. So they, they should have sequential, sequential birth certificates, and his was out of that sequence. Yeah. So, so, their, so their point is, well, this document, as presented, is just not authentic, and it doesn't prove that he was born there. Um, one, because it was tampered with, uh, you know, when they added stuff that shouldn't have been in, like African, which was not a term that was used in 1961. Um, and, of course, the sequential numbering, it was out of order. So that didn't make any sense. And, and, and the sheriff basically said, listen, this is easy to prove. All we need to do is see the microfish records. It'll be in there. Yeah, amazing. And, you know, that's... that's, that's well, well, my that's question is... Shown. This information obviously has been held under wraps for some time. We know that uh, some other journalists have died actually in trying to represent information about the fact that Obama is a criminal, supported uh, and tied into the drug cartel and the uh, banking cartels. He is a usurper, which is a Kenyan citizen. And even if you didn't deal with the fact that he was born in Kenya, his father was a British citizen, a subject and citizen. He could not be, quote, a natural born American, even if he was born here. Right. By by actual American law and precedent. So we have a situation where we have a usurper in the White House. He's also yep. a sociopathic psychopath. And he's doing support for a, a an attack by NATO and the United Nations against their own charter, the United Nations Charter and NATO's charter, that allows them to start a war in the Middle East against Syria, which will almost certainly precipitate the closure of the Strait of Hormuz, because when the Iranians get involved, they've already passed legislation last week through their own government to close the Strait. Now, they'd only do that to cut their nose off to spite their face because as of July 1, which is two weeks ago, the Iranians have now been shut down in terms of their oil shipments and it's dropped in half uh, their total revenues. They've also had an embargo, and the Iranians are so enraged they're even blaming America for weather weaponry against their population. Now, I don't know if that's proven yet because harp weapons, weather weapons, are very varied. They're not just harp. They're superheated lasers to the upper atmosphere. There are other technologies, which I'm certain is very hard for them to prove. Because you, with harp, you have a radio signal that's 100,000 times stronger than a regular radio station. And any ham radio operator would know if harp is operational. 
So I doubt course, that that's Dr. what's Bill, going. They may they may be referring to to what you, the story that you and I broke, in, which in, is that. Uh, yeah, the disruption of the loop current is the real cause. I don't think that it was a direct one-on-one. I think that, that the destruction of the American Midwest and the drought with the extreme heat now is caused by the same factor. Uh, literally, while they're, de- you know, so in other words, no, it wasn't a harp-based thing. But what we do have is we have special forces inside there. We have the swift uh, uh, economic actions in January 1, so authorized by Obama, directly against Iran. These are acts of war. When you literally take hostage an entire population of 80 million people in Iran, Iran alone, and to 23 million people in Syria, and you say, we're going to have an embargo against food for you, so you can't even buy staples, that's an act of war. And Russia is basically saying, no, you're not going to do this. They keep on pressing Russia and China. And Russia and China, you know, for certain, are making plans. They're passing technology on. They're giving the S-300 anti-aircraft system. If I was Mr. Assad, I'd be making a call to Mr. Putin say, we don't need just logistic and technical support. We need the full S-300 system. We need anti-aircraft batteries and missiles. We want a, a Russian foreign special troops. We want Iranian Quds forces on the ground. And we're going to clean up this mess now. Well, it, they probably will do that, but it may go beyond that because... I'm sure it will. I, I'm certain what will happen is that the America, if the Americans make a twitch in the, in, the Gulf, in the Gulf, I can guarantee you somebody uh, who's had a little bit too much Syrian uzu uh, <laughs> some morning is going to get up in a rock, on a, on a, on a uh, Yakan's hypersonic cruise missile battery uh, after being trained by the Russian uh, technicians, and he's going to say... To hell with these blankety blank Americans, and I'm telling you, a bunch of our ships are going to the bottom of Davy Jones' locker. And if they, and then we're going to get a panic call from Mr. Obama to Mr. Putin, and they'll re, Americans will realize they have lock-on command sequence, and the Russians are already launching missiles on American cities. Well, the hotline, uh, I'm assuming it was hotline conversation, uh, maybe an hour ago between Putin and Obama, basically. Uh, involve both of them telling each other to go to hell. Well, Mr. That's Putin is no slouch. Okay, listen, first off, Obama should not run an ice cream shop. He could actually fail an ice cream shop on the beach in 110 degrees. He's an idiot. <laughs> Mr. Putin is super competent. He's a Russian who doesn't drink vodka. The guy knows what he's doing. He's a nationalist. He knows that Russia's been screwed over by the banks with Glasnost and Perestroika just before he took over power in, in the last uh, three or four terms. He knows that Russia has been played with by the British banksters who caused the Russian Revolution, which is primarily a British operation by the banksters again. So they they had over 100 years of disaster visited on them by these same monsters that now want by the, have the Russians to buy the debt of Europe and to be shackled into this monster, this mess again. And the Russians finally have had it. I don't blame them for having it. They realize what's going on. Their only client state that they're allied with, Syria and Iran, the West wants to completely decapitate the regime. It's going to get crazy real soon. Welcome back, and uh, you know we're not trying to be the purveyors just of bad news. The good news is that uh, we have people that even if they chipped away the Constitution and the actions by the Supreme Court, we need to deal with the fact that a Congress needs to actually be elected officials that will remove members of the Supreme Court to do unconstitutional things, that will remove presidents to do unconstitutional actions, that will respect the rule of law, and despite the fact that we have people that are supposedly the guardians of that that are violating it, we can remove them because we're Americans. Now, we also have to show that worldwide, America is being hauled in like hooks. It said we're hauled in like hooks, like the hooks in the jaws of the ancient empires, into a conflict. And Obama is pushing us. Hillary is pushing us. In fact, Hillary's not pushing fast enough. They want to replace her with, uh, with uh, Kerry. They want to replace Hillary with John Kerry as the so-called candidate, uh, as the so-called Secretary of State. That's what there's the talk around now, because he wants to move on an attack on Iran and Syria, which will guarantee 
not only an invasion of the Middle East by China that has, as literally Mao Zedong said, he can raise an army of 200,000 thousand. That's the army of Armageddon. And right. then they have built the, uh, the, wall, the wall, literally the, the superhighways going through Afghanistan and through Pakistan to the Middle East, to Iran, have been built by the Communist Chinese. They have a full access now to the valley of, 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 the, uh, of the Euphrates and right to the valley of the Jezreel. The Chinese could put several hundred thousand troops in Iran through Pakistan in a matter of, of weeks. days. Well, days. Maybe, maybe days. I, the, the, the next 48 hours are absolutely critical. Well, the uh, fact is that the fall of Iran cannot be count- countenanced by the Chinese. The Chinese are being hemmed around. They know that American foreign policy in the South China Sea is trying to cut them off from access to oil right in their own sea, even if they made negotiations with the local countries. They know that American policy basically is we want to literally, literally uh, you know, fence in China and Russia. And since Glasnost and Perestroika, Russia has now rebuilt itself and now has built itself its military up to where it can deal with all all the chinks in the army of the American military and take us down and destroy us. And the fact is that America, with this president, is heading toward economic Armageddon. It's racing toward a war. It's trying to print money like it's going out of style to support Europe when no amount of money will save the problem. In fact, they've calculated out that the European Central Bank cannot possibly, no matter how much money is pumped in, save Europe from economic annihilation. And you know what will replace it? Once they have a federated Europe, which they're going to have out of this and just write off the debt, they're going to have a biometric world currency that we call the mark of the beast and is tied to the so-called health care bill, the Obamacare, which they anticipated all along. They would have to have a health care bill as a modus for a biometric world ID, and America being the template. And guess where the, uh, the mark of the beast comes from? Not from Britain, not from Beijing, China, not from Be- Moscow. It comes from Schriever Air Force Base, Falcon, Colorado, United States of America. That's where it's coming from, and the false prophet is residing right now in the White House. A lot of people think the false prophet is a religious leader like the Pope. No, he's just the one who marries the final empires of America to Russia because there has to be a period of dialectic, of a period of quiet after the rumblings toward Armageddon. But even if it's punctuated by a false peace treaty for several years, we're marching toward Armageddon as we speak. Yeah. We're, it's, you can Even if it's punctuated, let's say there's a peace treaty next year, 2013, and it holds for three and a half years. We are marching step by step, and those steps started with Glasnost and Perestroika. They really amped up with Oklahoma City and then 9-11. In 9-11, the opening shot of World War III on an economic phase culminated in 2007-8 with a banking collapse. And all these things are tied together. Well, and you've got to remember, we have the worst national di- natural disaster in America's history right now. Sixty-five percent of uh, the nation is suffering severe drought. Uh, my area is one of the worst hit. I was just out with a friend of mine who's a science teacher and a farmer and discussing it all morning. And, I mean, it is just horrific. You are looking. I'm seeing corn that's four foot or less tall, tasseled. Uh, <laughs> My, my buddy said, you know, the, the little the miniature corn you get in salad bars? He said, some of the corn looks like that, and some of it, there's not even that. Yeah. Wow. Well, 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 we're what we're seeing is, plus, according to this four-star general who spoke to my friend and colleague, Dr. William Ray, who founded the Dallas Environmental Clinic, listen to this, two months ago said that he has direct high classified information that the soon-to-be release of radiation from Japan will be so great, he is already moved to South America. He's already moved to South America. This is a four-star U.S. general. So we have a situation where we're going to have a massive... This is the timeline. We have now Sheriff Arpaio's release. We have Obama now literally on the horns of a dilemma, not only a Fast and Furious, but the LIBOR scandal, which is in many ways even bigger because it's caused a death. And it's also caused a bankruptcy of U.S. cities and, and teetering bankruptcy of states. When Oakland, California goes bankrupt, when they cut back services, people die. When they cut back social services and Medicare, Medicaid, people die. 
when they see the collapse of Europe because of the banking collapse, which is tied to the collapse of Greece, uh, Italy, and Spain, those people jumped off bridges, didn't have med- medications, didn't have chemotherapy, didn't have medications to keep them alive during extreme medical disasters. They died. So we have a situation here where we have the meltdown of Europe, we have the precipitating almost immediately either it's going to be a uh, a buildup of giant armaments or it's going to immediately turn hot into a hot war right now in the Middle East. And uh, the very first thing I was shown 24 years ago, and I'm going to say this because some people say, well, why dig into the prophetic, Dr. Diggles? Because, and I'm going to repeat this, there's a million people out there that call themselves prophets. And I am so disgusted when I hear this word, the people that speak about prophetic things, I am a prophet, not just speaking about prophecy. And I don't know everything, but what I do know, one of the very first things I was shown is when, and this is 24 years ago, 1988, when they closed the Strait of Hormuz. Right? No, this is actually a supernatural experience 24 years ago, long after my near death at eight and a half. And I was shown, the very first thing I was shown after giving clay and iron was high above the earth, and I was told supernaturally that when they close the Strait of Hormuz, this will be the first of the march toward Armageddon. And we're there. They closed their lives. years ago, uh, Nostradamus, wrote the, uh, Nostradamus wrote the following. Uh, it's 1074 uh, is the Quantrain number. Quote, in the year the great seventh number accomplished, it will appear at the time of the games of slaughter, not far from the age of the great millennium where the, when the dead will come out of their graves, end quote. A lot of people interpret that the games of slaughter to be the Olympic Games, possibly a very a bloody event happening there. Uh, the the great millennium, which has just happened, we're now into the third millennium, uh, when the dead will come out of their graves, can be the, the return of Christ. It can also be uh, people underground in a nuclear war. Um, so, uh, now, I... I Always take Nostradamus with a big green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can interpret him in many different ways. I, I don't really I, call. I, he's I, not a prophet. Okay, he was a necromancer that used a bowl and technologies from. Most people don't realize what he actually did, and he uh, he I used know. technologies and vapors they call it in order to get into an altered state to summon demonic entities and use this technology that was used. And he had an, it we call a book called the Ancient Book of Egyptian Mysteries that was translated, and he had access to it through the Vatican Library uh, and the and the. the the wealthy families of the black nobility in uh, Venezia. That's why he was able to do a lot of these things because he was using what are called black arts of uh, wizardry. And uh, and, you, and you need to know that when you you look at his stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now, what I'm trying to say is, my knowledge isn't complete, but here's the timeline. I see us right now on the verge of a major release of radiation from Japan. I see us having a meltdown. I see us a meltdown of Obama's government. Now, when he becomes, when he melts down mentally as well, because he's teetering, we may see some very crazy behavior on the part of Obama now that the pressure is on. And his latest actions, shouting, yelling back and forth to Putin just an hour ago, doesn't bode well for the next 48 hours. When we come back, we're going to hear more from Mike Pilardi and what you need to do and what's Obamacare going to do for health care in America. Welcome back to the Neutral Medical Report and... Uh, yeah, I'm just looking at the 1,018-page document that has the, all the various sub-portions uh, that deal with the actual chip, the Child's Health Insurance Plan that has the implantable RFID chip that Health and Human Services and the FDA have approved. And, and this is not part of the 2,700-page uh, other we call a, uh, affordable health care plan. This was passed before it uh, and certified by the Health and Human Services as 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 a prelude to the health insurance plan. So people need to understand how this has been set up. This is, uh, you have, they made it so complicated, a lot of people miss it. And they don't understand also the tax rulings. One of the things that I've heard, and I want you to clarify this because you're an IRS agent, uh, yep. Michael, is that you're going to be taxed 
on the capital gains of any investments you've had by I think it's 3.8% and any in capital gains on your home of 3.8%. So let's say your home gained $200,000 in value, uh, you'll be taxed 3.8% of the 200000 which is about another uh, $8,000. Yeah, what they did was they, they, they if you make more than 200000 a year, that's what you pay, and it's called a Medicare tax. Right. And uh, yeah, so if you if you're in a situation where you you know you've been married, you know you and your wife let's say uh, sell your house, you know and you and you and you um, taking five hundred thousand dollars from it, the first two hundred and fifty will be exempt. After that, you pay that three point eight percent tax on it. Um, of course, this is supposed to be aimed only at rich people, and now you know you're considered rich if you make two hundred thousand a year, and that's basically. Um, all you know, small two business. government salaries. You know what I'm saying? If you're basically if you're yeah, in the two government, government for twenty years, right? So. And it also means everybody that owns a small business, if they don't make that income, they're not in small business. They're basically right. what I call they're basically out of their bedroom. Um, yeah. So if you're earning that amount of money. The only people that actually 75% of jobs come from small business, it becomes medium and large yes. business. This will choke off any employer forever considering the idea of, of expanding their business, buying new equipment, or hiring staff. It will also choke off American suppliers, and what they'll do is they'll outsource more to India and to uh, Russia and to uh, China and other countries to be buy materials, chemicals, and even do software development. So as a result, it will kill business and development in America. It will kill it. Uh, yes. And uh, Obama acts arrogant as if if you don't worship the government, you know, and the government teat will provide everything by, by taxing, quote, the rich until you have all of your share, your due share. Uh, it yeah. is a total communist approach. It is not one based on reality. All men are created equal in their rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, but they're not created equal in their ability to produce. And my right and my ability to help people, for example, I've deemed after prayer to give it freely as a consultation, but they don't have a right to that. And, for example, I have a right to say, look, as a medical doctor, I don't have to, quote, operate on this person or do this for this person or that person. I do it because I'm a believer and because I freely give to those people who support this ministry and this nutraceutical program. But the fact is that one of the rights of Americans is that we have to have control of our after-tax dollars. What Obama and Judge Roberts have done is said your after-tax dollars are free, are, are, are free targets, that we can mandate anything we damn well want, and you're just a surf in the system, and even the money in your pocket, even though in your bank will, through the inflatocracy, inflate it out of existence, or tax you out of existence, or give you a mandate, even mandatory vaccines, and your doctors can't even use innovative care. They have to provide the standard of care determined by the pinheads that leave them decide your day of your death. That's how disgusting this is. Yeah, and people need to plan for this. And one of the things my company does, if they, people want to call me, is we'll, we'll, we'll teach you how to plan for this. Or if you have an existing IRS problem, you know, you can call you can call me at 888-873-8825 or visit the website at mikevillardiea.com, which is M-I-K-E-V-I-L-A-R-D-I-E-A.com. That's that number again. That's 877 877- no, it's 888. 888, yeah, 888. 888. 873. 873. 8825. 8825. I'd like to repeat that. So 888-873-8825. And that's Mike, V-I-L-A-R-D-I-E-A.com. That's correct. What are the main taxes? Because a lot of people are, are misjudged these taxes, and they don't realize it's a class warfare direct attack on the ability to generate new jobs. In fact, it's stated by various experts, including Western journalism, that this law, if it comes in full force, will kill 2 million jobs the first year. Let, let's let's go through them because there are many taxes, and and this plan was was really set up to hurt people, not help them. All right, let me give you a couple of examples. Let's say that you make a hundred thousand dollars a year, and you you are going to have a major heart surgery, and you know about it. Uh, right now, you could take half your income, fifty thousand dollars, put it in a flexible spending account, and set that money aside for the operation. That would mean you'd only get taxed on the fifty thousand, the other fifty thousand. Okay. Well, under under Obamacare, starting next year. Um, they're going to limit you 
to 2500 to put in a flexible spending account for medical expenses. So you're not anything above that, you know, you got to pay full tax on. So that that hurts you because now now if you're going to have a big medical expense and you know it, you can't pay for it with pre-tax dollars. You're going to so so financially it's going to be very devastating for people. The other thing that they do is currently if you have let's say fifteen thousand dollars in medical bills and you make a hundred thousand dollars you're able to write off seventy five hundred of those or half of them under obamacare you'll only be able to write off five thousand instead of seventy five hundred because they up the um they up the percentage before you can get any kind of tax deduction from seven and a half percent till um you know to um so that hurts people again. So we, 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 we really see, it, it, you know, there's, there's so many taxes. Um, if you have a good health insurance plan, starting in 2018, you're going to, it's, they're going to call it, a, they call it a Cadillac health plan, and they're going to hit you with a 40% excise tax. So if you're an individual and right now you pay, you pay, you're paying $10,200 for medical insurance, if you pay anything above that, you're going to get hit with a 40% excise tax. So you have On to pay the government 40% just for having a good health plan. So in other words, and, 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 yeah. and by the way, the plan is going to be inflated almost immediately. What I hear from the insurance experts is that because Obamacare and Robert's decision that it's not going to be enforceable, most people will not opt to actually buy the insurance. They'll opt to pay the penalty, and they'll just go to the hospitals, which will drive insurance companies to drive premiums up 40 to 50% in the first year. So that means insurance companies that get their legal experts to know it will start trying to raise premiums now in advance to full implementation. And so in the next year or so, premiums will rise. They already rose 30 to 40 percent already. They'll rise right. another 40 percent to 50 percent by the time it's fully implemented. And it will put it not only out of the reach, but it'll guarantee that everybody will be over this limit. So they'll all be hit with the excise tax if they have a good, quote, out of the government private policy, which means within a matter of several years, private health insurance will be killed. There'll be no private public option at all. It'll all be no private option. It'll all be public option, controlled completely by the pinhead government that want to force vaccinate you, force chip you, and we'll have a database where your doctor is a spits not white coated, uh, literally policeman sending information to Health and Human Services and to the police forces anywhere, including Interpol if you fly into Germany or anywhere you go. They'll literally. Everything you say can and will be used against you from your doctor, your nurse, your healthcare professional, your social worker. Everything will be entered into the database. Yeah, and, and what else they do is, you know, that phase-in tax, the penalty tax you were talking about, which starts in 2014 and phases into 2016, it's going to range from $695 a person to about $4,700 a person. So the government ups that tax, they up the penalty over time to make it more painful for you. And and really, what's the purpose of that? The purpose is just to, 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 to bankrupt the, the people that could least afford it are going to be hit with this heavy penalty. Uh, it, it's absolutely ludicrous. I mean, starting next year, too, they start taxing medical devices that cost more than $100. Um, so there's going to be an excise tax of 2.3% on medical equipment. So it's going to make all the medical equipment more expensive to the hospital. So they need x-ray machines. They need, they need scanning machines. Whatever they need, it's going to cost them more because of this tax. Right. Amazing. I mean. It's mind-boggling. It, it is mine, but it really needs to be repealed. If it doesn't get repealed, we're in yeah. big trouble. Big, big trouble. Here's our marching orders. Impeach Obama, put in Glass-Steagall, take over the Fed Reserve, fire the uh, so-called board that are international bankers, stop lending money to countries all over the world, stop threatening Russia and China that we may start World War III, and stop the idea of sending special forces to de decapitate the Assad regime and start a conflict that will close out the strait and crash the world economy. We are heading into famine this year. If people don't realize that the end is near, they're just crazy or stupid, or both. You got that right. Yeah. And if you don't prepare for what's coming, you'll be chewed up in the jaws of the disasters that are coming. Back tomorrow with much more with Jerry Strybos and Tim Alexander back for Hour 3 again tomorrow.